Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our F14B Tomcat and we're looking at using ICLS and TACAN to do a nighttime landing. So our CV is there, it's heading straight north at 11 knots. We are starting 25 miles away. We're going to be on a starting vector of rough east. We are first going to use our TACAN to hook up to the carrier on 11 X-ray and we are going to use our HSD course line to plot an intercept radial uh, for the landing here so it's going due north remember this carrier but it's uh, actual runway is going to be offset nine degrees to the right so it's actual landing radial is going to be something like that there so that's the radial we need to intercept so with the HSD and the TACAN we can navigate to that radial merge to that radial and then turn in to the carrier we'll do that all at around 3,000 feet then when we're about 10 miles from the carrier we'll switch over to our ICLS which will give us elevation and azimuth guidance all the way down to where the meatball is going to take over about three quarters of a mile out so i thought you might like to see me setting the icls up so on the carrier here we're going to press add on waypoint zero perform command activate icls we're going to go for channel three today and we're going to go for unit unit zero zero one which is the name of that carrier check it save it and let's get in the cockpit okay we're in so let's get straight on it let's check our altitude three and a half thousand feet that looks good straight to landing display mode and we're going to need our floodlight on because i can't see a thing i don't know about you let's sit there and altitude is decreasing so we're going to get that uh settled now next is going to be the tacan um we've already got a full tutorial on tacan called basic tacan where we explain exactly everything about tacan so all we're going to do today is use it rather than go over it all again a key Jester, navigation, TACAN, tactical, Stennis. Roger. It's going to program that in. We're going to set our command, uh, steer command to TACAN. Check our angels. We're going up, so let's slow that down. And our speed is going up, so let's slow that down. Okay, next we're going to um, set up our displays a bit more. We're going to go to HUD, ICLS, uh, or ALS. Uh, a BDI to ILS and this can uh, steer mode says TACAN so if we look on our HSD down there we can now see we've got the uh, TACAN azimuth there so 020 is where the carrier is but we don't want to go right, right to the carrier we want to keep it heading east to intercept the radial so what we need to do now is set that radial up and we do it with this knob here we can turn it with our mouse scroll wheel and we want to set it to well the the radial is true course of 351 bearing in mind we're in georgia now so a magnetic deviation is what six degrees so 351 minus six degrees equals three four six so let's plug three four six in here now scroll wheel that done i'm going to move my seating position down a little bit i'm a little bit high okay that's that done <clears throat> uh, check our deviation line right so next We've got the HSD here, so that is our course line of 326, uh, 346, that's our radial, this line here. This is our course deviation line, it says that currently we are left of the course line, so we need to keep heading this way until this chap here starts to merge into the centre. When it merges directly on the centre with this uh, main course line here, then we are on that radial. Then we need to concentrate on getting in the direction of the TACAN, which is there. And we want to end up eventually with this TACAN signal directly on our 12, with this course line directly on our 12, with this um, deviation line exactly in the middle. Then we're on our radial and going in. Check our altitude. Uh, we're heading up, so we need to arrest that. Otherwise, we can just carry on as we are. So let's just get the altitude sorted out. Bit of trim. Okay, that's sending us down again. Let's get our ICLS, our ARR. ARA 63 make sure it's turned on and it is make sure we're on channel 3 mouse right click twice to get to channel 3 we are now hooked in to the carrier's ICLS we're not going to use that until about 10 miles out though Takan uh, needs to get us to that position before we can actually start using the ICLS altitude's good just a waiting game now 20 miles uh, as the crow flies from us to the carrier leveling out now speed's good let's hold the speed off the power a little bit Still got a way to go until we meet our radial. Gaining altitude again, let's arrest that. Passing through 3000 again, and we can see our course deviation lines start to move in. So what we're gonna do is start merging now with our radial course. So we're gonna start heading left now. Keep an eye on our altitude, keep an eye on our speed. We've got fast again, so let's slow down. A Little bit of up trim, gain altitude. So we're just focus on the HSD and our flight instruments now. No point of looking out the window. 
Need a bit more aggression on this turn now. We're losing attitude, so let's turn a bit harder and more aft stick. In fact, why don't we show the controls? Okay. So that is us pretty much lined up. So we've now got our Takan signal on our nose, 12 o'clock. We've got our course line exactly on 12 o'clock pointing towards it and our deviation line is not perfect but if we deviate right slightly uh, yes we then we can centralize it perfectly so good so far now note also that we've got our localizer in our HUD now and on our VDI so this is azimuth steering guidance so it's telling us that we are now left of the glide slope localizer so we need to head right and merge with this line here and be careful not to overshoot it also we need to think about getting ready for landing as well so we've got a lot to do now so and pause just want to get a little better on that radio so radial uh, sorry on that uh, localizer now I'm gonna head right a little bit hopefully we'll merge with that localizer now we're going to start getting ready for landing 250 knots that's good flaps down hook down gear down and now what we're going to do to arrest our workload a little is just let me uh, try and stabilize our altitude is we're going to turn on our apc our um automatic throttle just get that right okay that'll do our APC is here we press right click on that button there it goes to auto throttle for automatic power compensation that's going to take control of our throttle completely at point and, and it's just a good thing to do because it takes some workload off me so I can concentrate on uh, trying to fly this localizer and it's going to keep us to a correct speed where our angle of attack is correct for landing that'll be 15 units of angle of attack which will mean that our alpha, uh, angle of attack error bracket here the e bracket is lined up with our aircraft datum which is this dot in here and on our angle of attack indexer here we'll have the circle in the middle so it's going to do all of that for us so what we want to do is have the throttle in any position other than idle and then press right click on this and then don't touch the throttle again so up a little right click it now has control next what we're going to do is Ah, whoops, I just realised that we were still in TACAN mode here. So this localizer we're getting is actually TACAN based rather than ILS based, but that's still fine. It still does more or less the same job in, to, in getting us into the right position. So we're going to follow it all the way until uh, we've got there 10 miles away. So let's keep going. Uh, do lots of tree trimming work now to um, comply with the APC. Check our altitude. Altitude is good. I have to go up in my seat a bit, I think, to see that path vector okay we are 10 miles we're switching to IA ICLS now AWL there we've now got if I pause that there the ILS symbology and we're way off at the moment uh, but we do like a challenge uh, it looks like I uh, messed my TACAN run up a little bit so this is the localizer here for the ILS it's telling us that we're way off to the left and we need to get to the right to merge this here with the uh, aircraft datum dot here and the same with the, the glide slope here this gives us elevation guidance information for the glide slope so what we're going to do is we're not going to climb we're going to keep on flying level and this glide slope obviously we, as we get closer will come down and merge with us and then we'll head down towards the carrier but we are going to have to put some fairly aggressive right moves in to get on the localizer here back onto the uh, radial for, for the ICLS localizer radial so the next thing we're going to do is quickly check the keys that we're going to be doing today there's not going to be many hook gear flaps and we've got our DLC as well so our, so what we should be using is our direct lift control for small movements in elevation uh, we turn that on once the flap gears and hook is down with DLC toggle there and then we can use thumb wheel forward and thumb wheel aft to increase or reduce lift as such um, I do struggle to use it a bit I have to use left control and the button as well uh, that makes it a little bit difficult to me but I'll try and use that where I can so now we just need to concentrate on flying the plane so we're going to go right and we've got the repeater down here on the VDI we've got the, uh, the the same stuff basically so we're climbing now and that is certainly not what we want that is an error let's get back down we do need to go right quite aggressively though Okay, we're now merged with the glide slope. We can now point our path vector, which is this chap here, down at roughly where the boat is going to be. I can't see the... Ah, I think I can see something on the boat there. Something off the left about uh, one or two degrees. So we're going to stay on this glide slope now. And um, we're just going to keep correcting to the right of the boat now until we get on our localizer line. It's going to be easier said than done. Okay, so we're just bringing that localizer in now. 
There's something else. I seem to be fighting with the APC. It makes a move, then I make a move, then it makes a move, then I make a move. And I think I just figured out why that is. I think that's because um, I forgot to put my air brakes out. Uh, so it doesn't have enough throttle range to play with. So what I'm going to do is actually put my air brakes out to full. It's going to be a bit of a bump where it tries to figure out what to do because of the change. Let me try and correct for that. With the air brake out, the engines can work harder and it gives them a better range of movement of the throttle and it should mean that we have we get on a lot better. Yeah, it seems a lot easier already, right, yeah. The uh, the APC is not having to make such big jumps now. In the meantime, I've got OK on the localizer. I'm slightly above the glide slope, so we better start correcting that ever so slightly. In a lot of movement uh, with the, this putting the air brakes out, but I think we're OK. I'm slightly right to get back onto the localizer. Quickly double check hook gear slipping off the uh, localizer again. Whoops! Don't lose situation. Really easy to lose situational awareness here. Just keep it cool, keep the movement smooth, just like formation flying. Above the glide slope, let's bring that down just a touch. Getting right. Small changes in trim. really easy to overcorrect in movements like this when I've got literally I'm just flight instruments in fact I'm not even really flight instruments at the only I don't really need flight instruments at the moment because because of my APC I'm just going to do my hard VSI would be nice down there but I don't dare to, I can't change my zoom levels because the zoom knob is on the bloody um, throttle and if I risk moving the throttle then that's my APC buggered so I'm just going to stay looking like this but we're okay We've got all our central. Oh, sorry, uh, scratch that. We have our VSI on our left of our HUD. What am I saying? I'm just comfort talking myself. I'm going to... Um, um, if you're uncomfortable, so am I. Um, I haven't done this before. It's my first time. Um, when we get to the... I believe I believe we do. Uh, we get to the meatball at uh, uh, 0.7 miles, we're going to switch to the meatball. So how are we going to see the wires? Don't know. Don't know. I haven't done this. We'll just... We're in the journey together. And when I'm nervous, I like to talk a lot. So if I just, you know, mind, if I just keep talking a bit. I'm getting panicky now. Really struggling to hold the six straight. And I'm losing situational awareness. I can't hold the bird straight. Yep, this is horrible. Yep, I yep, never want to do this again. Okay, just trust the instruments. Just look at the cross. Trust the cross. Everything else, ignore. Oh, sugar, I've just gone off the goddamn glide slope. I've gone off, I've gone off it. I'm right off the, uh, uh, I'm right off the radio. Oh, this is getting harder the closer I get. Yep, not going to do this again. Okay. Back in, we're on the radio, we're on the radio, we're on the radio. I'm having this weird thing with my eye, I can't tell what's level and what's slanted anymore. What is level and what's slanted? Right, instinct, just instinct now. I'm just, I'm going to forget my ILS. I'm going to look at my meatball. I can't zoom in because it's the bloody thing. Am I slanty? No, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, 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 good. Right, 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 Sweating profusely right now. Don't back into the back of the carrier. Why are we going left? Why is it doing that? It's me, it's me me that's doing it I'm having this weird panic everything's shifting left <laughs> I'm below <sighs> I've no idea where the goddamn wires are where are we there it is there it is there it is mill power mill power mill power oh. uh -huh. four wire and you didn't break my neck either So what we'll do is we'll go back and we'll cut all of the panicking comms out and just make it sound very professional. <clears throat> Excuse me one second. So that was the ICLS landing. Uh, so just remember to set the ICLS up as we did, as we did with the carrier and on the ARA-63. I mean, you don't have to use the um, the ACM power mode, but I found it just takes, you know, it's just one less thing to concentrate because uh, on because concentrating on that screen is just really difficult. Uh, let alone having to do your power as well. It seems that just hitting the wires is a function of just trusting in the uh, the crosshair, which seems to deviate about 
half a mile from the carrier and then switching to the meatball, trusting the meatball, and that's it really. That, there's nothing else you can do. You can't see those wires and you can't really see the ship, to be honest, especially if it was pitching. In the panic of landing, I can't remember whether I went uh, mill power when I hit the wires, but what I should have done is gone mill power uh, when I hit the wires. I'll wind that back and see if I actually remember to, in case it was a bolter, and it was almost a bolter. It was a four-wire, obviously. Right, that's all I've got to say on that. Obviously, it wasn't very pretty, but it got you know what it got me down i'm here i'm in one piece um i would say only for the brave out there try it if you've got a heart condition i to be honest really wouldn't suggest that because it's uh, really not very nice at all other than that hope you enjoyed it see you later